Hello and welcome to this corporate access segment right here on CNBC Africa. My name is Zinati Puma. Blockchain technology has made great strides over the past few years, speeding up processes like AI and smartphones. This increasingly fast-paced technology has allowed users to share data easier without losing control or ownership. Studies found that improvements in technology are beneficial in classrooms and that technology has the ability to better manage accountability, transparency and overall educational experiences. Partnerships between governments and the private sector can also lead the way to boost nationwide education and employment. The director of African operations of blockchain engineering company IO Global, John O'Connor, joins me today to explore blockchain technology and how partnerships with governments can help improve quality of life. Welcome, John. Now, just starting off, please can you give us a background of IO Global and your role at the company? Impa Alpa is a research and engineering company that specializes in building blockchain solutions. So uh, we built one of the world's largest cryptocurrencies, um, but now we're focused on delivering real blockchain applications that help real people. Mm, and just give me also just some detail on what you do uh, at, IO, at IO Global. Yeah, so my role is to set up and head up our African operations. So this is the arm of the business that focuses on taking our blockchain technology and turning it into products which are useful for governments, the private sector, um, for NGOs. So our focus is to use the underlying technology and figure out how we're going to turn this into something useful for an education ministry or figure out how we can use this to enable faster, cheaper remittances um, you know, from diaspora uh, sending money back home to Ghana or to Ethiopia, or maybe how to make a supply chain more traceable and more fair so that consumers at the end can see where exactly their coffee has come from. But, mm. So this is it. We take the generalized technology and make it useful for real world applications. All right. We'll go back to that point that you made about blockchain uh, assisting in education. But I mean, we hear about blockchain all the time, especially now with the emergence of the crypto economy, where it's not just about trading cryptocurrencies anymore. We are moving to a world of the crypto economy. Just walk me through what exactly is blockchain and what is the crypto economy? Mm. So the way I often try to explain this is that blockchain is just a set of tools or technologies which can enable the faster transfer of value across the world. So what do I mean by this? Well, currently, if I was to try to send money um, from the UK to potentially Ethiopia, family in Ethiopia, you might use a service like Western Union. They might take 20, 30 percent fees um, for a transfer across the world. What blockchain allows us to do is to transfer this value across essentially the internet at close to zero fees. So this could be money that we transfer or it could be other representations of value, potentially, let's say, um, a digital deed towards a house. So uh, whilst it's a complicated subject, the simple answer is blockchain enables rails for any transfer of value that you're looking to do uh, cheaper and more economically and, of course, faster. Now, John, we've often heard about blockchain being immune to data hacks and basically being uh, more secure than other platforms. What makes uh, blockchain more secure than all the other platforms? So this is going to be a simplification, but the way in which blockchain works is it's a way of creating trust in a digital environment, in a digital world, without having a central party to keep track of that. So what do I mean by this? If you're talking about the way in which a bank would work, they will have a ledger where they keep track of who holds what amount of money in which account. And we trust that bank to keep an accurate ledger of who owns what. Within the blockchain world, we take this ledger and we distribute it across hundreds of thousands of different devices across the world. So everyone keeps a ledger of who owns what, and when a transfer happens, every single one of these hundreds of thousands or millions of devices can update that ledger showing that transaction. So because of this, we've distributed the trust across a network, which makes it much harder to hack. 
even if one person changes that ledger, we look at the sum of ledgers across the system and can say, hey, the consensus is this is what the right allocations are. So this is it. We distribute trust into a digital environment, and that makes blockchain a lot more resilient than any system that relies on a single party. Mm. Now, you mentioned earlier the impact that blockchain can have in uh, education systems. Uh, and uh, recently, the Ethiopian government announced a partnership with uh, your company, IO Global. Uh, basically, they plan to, uh, you guys plan to overhaul the education system in Ethiopia. Tell me more about that. Yeah, thank you for asking. So, we think this is probably the largest single implementation of blockchain ever done. So what we're going to be doing is issuing 5 million identities for Ethiopian students uh, upon our platform. This will mean that as they go through the educational system, they'll have digital signatures proving they've achieved what they say they have achieved. So you can imagine when you get to the end of your university career, you could send a single link towards an employer. The employer will be able to click on that link and look at validated, digitally signed history of everything that you've accomplished in your education. This is important because fake degrees, fake educational certificates are a massive challenge within Ethiopia, but more broadly across Africa. So we're working to put to put authenticity back into people's educational achievements. And actually, that makes sense, John, because uh, I've worked in corporate and, you know, before when you do apply, you hand in your qualifications on paper and then Three years down the line, they'll be asking for your qualifications again. And it, it's, it's very, yeah. very um, interesting how basically with this system, you can just give a link and they have all your information and they know that it, it, it's the real thing. And yeah, it, it's very, very interesting. Uh, but I mean, just with that, I mean, it's, you plan to overhaul the education system, but could this move beyond education? Absolutely. So the concept of having a digital identity that's useful is really what we're going for here. To keep the example with Ethiopia, um, across the country, you know, tens and tens of millions of Ethiopians have uh, a government issued Kabele ID, often a piece of cardboard. But whilst this is a validated government identity, it's not useful. I can't share this with a loan provider uh, across the internet to ask them to give me finance to be able to expand my farm. So what we're doing is creating validated digital identities, which can be used as the basis of a loan decision, an insurance decision, or really any other type of interaction that you might have in the digital world. So we'll be looking to expand this system into um, driver's licenses, birth certificates, and really any other form of credential to try to expand the usefulness of this system. Mm. And I mean, just uh, going back to, you know, the fact that you are concentrating on Africa and you are in charge of operations in Africa. What is the reasoning behind using your high tech solutions in Africa where technology is perceived to be lagging? Absolutely. So I get this question a lot. I think that the real value is that there's a strong appetite uh, across African nations to be able to lead to be able to drive fast and dramatic improvement in the welfare and the economies of the countries that we reside in. So when we're looking at the appetite for a transformational system amongst an Ethiopian minister, I would argue it's significantly stronger than if I were in the UK and trying to speak to a UK government minister. So the fact that we're still on uh, these quite basic, often paper-based systems across a variety of very important industries means that the benefit for switching to something this innovative and this advanced is so much greater than if we were to jump from a legacy system in the UK to where we are. So for me, it's this, it comes back to this leapfrogging idea. There's a drive in Africa to skip forwards to something really useful and amazing. And this is the drive that we've seen that has meant there are more mobile what money wallets in Africa than in any other continent. We've skipped past traditional payments when it comes to mobile money. I think we'll do the same with blockchain. Mm. John, as a person that is leading uh, this drive in Africa for blockchain, what is your vision for blockchain in Africa? And can it feed into the Africa continental free trade area that we're all excited about? Absolutely. Um, my drive uh, to my drive within this business and within this technology is about creating useful identities, fast, free and instant payments 
And then with that, to start to allow the programmability of those payments. So we're talking peer-to-peer -peer loans, uh, peer-to-peer insurance policies, and really to create a financial rails, which any fintech business across the continent can use freely and immediately. So this is what we want to do. We want to be the framework. We want to be the plumbing for a whole wave of innovative financial technology companies. When it comes towards our place within the broader ecosystem that you mentioned, uh, we're hoping massively to drive uh, into country trade across Africa. We hope that our systems will be used to bring down the cost of remittance across the continent and hopefully drive more trade across it. Mm, and just lastly, John, how do we find out more by t about uh, IO Global's Pan-African projects? We've just launched a new website, uh, cardano.africa.org. Um, we're going to be expanding across an initial five additional countries in Africa this year, but an additional 20 countries over the subsequent year. So there will be meetups organized by incubators and accelerators where developers can learn how to program on our platform and where businessmen and government officials can learn more how our technology can be useful to them. Indeed, uh, thank you so much for your time and for your insights, John, and just walking us through the impact that IO Global and uh, blockchain will have on Africa. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much for having me. All right. That was uh, John O'Connor, the Director of African Operations at IO Global. And that is it from me, Zinati Guma, on this corporate access segment on CNBC Africa. It's goodbye from me for now.